samsapato lokanam hitakari no tribuvane manyo sharanyakaro manyo sharanyakaro Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Bhajana Nandhin Namataliko Radha Krishna Padara Vinda Bhajana Nandhin Namataliko Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghutya Go Shri Jiva Gopala Go Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghuja Go Shri Jiva Gopala Go Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghuja Go Shri Jiva Gopala Go So we are continuing with the nectar of instruction. We're going to go on today to text number 10. Huh? We didn't finish 9? You want me to finish it? <laughs> I thought I finished it. Okay, if you want me to continue with 9, we'll do 9. We'll finish it. I think I finished it actually, but okay. We'll read first nine. Vaikuntaj Janito Vara Madapuri Tatra Pirasotsabad Vrindaranyad Udarapani Ramanat Tatra Pigovardana Radha Kundam Ihapi Goko Gokula Pate Preman Rita Plavanat Koryad Asya Virajato Giritate Sevam Vivekinaka. The holy place known as Mathura is spiritually superior to Vaikuntha, the transcendental world, because the Lord appeared there. Superior to Mathura Puri is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasa Lila pastime. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all, the super excellent Sri Radha Kun stands supreme, for it is over flooded with the ambrosial nectarian preem of the Lord of Goku, Sri Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve the divine Radha Kund, which is situated at the foot of Govardhan Hill? Thank you. 
we read the first paragraph. There are only two paragraphs in the purport. We read the first one. I'll read the second one. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, it is stated that when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first visited the area of Brajabhumi, he could not at first find the location of Radha Kund. This means that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was actually searching for the exact location of Radha Kund. Finally, he found the holy spot and there was a small pond there. He took his bath in that small pond and told his devotees that the actual Radha Kund was situated there. Later, the pond was excavated by Lord Chaitanya's devotees, headed first by the six Goswamis, such as Rupa and Raghunath Das. Presently, there is a large lake known as Radha Kund there. Sri Rupa Goswami has given much stress to Radha Kund because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to find it. Who then would give up Radha Kund and try to reside elsewhere? No person with transcendental intelligence would do so. The importance of Radha Kund, however, cannot be realized by other Vaishnava Sampradayas, nor can persons uninterested in the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understand the spiritual importance and divine nature of Radha Kund. Thus Radha Kund is mainly worshipped by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Lord Sri Chaitanya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in text number seven, we were reading about that Rupa Goswami was describing how to de develop taste for the holy name. He was saying, you have to keep chanting, just like the sugar cane, you chew the sugar cane, but if you have jaundice, it tastes very bitter. You have to keep chewing it. So same way with the holy name, you have no taste for the holy name, you have to keep chanting and keep chanting, gradually, gradually you develop a taste. So, if one is able to develop a taste for the holy name and to get rid of the contamination from his heart, in other words, if a, one is able to get through an arta navriti and actually come to the stage of being uh, very fixed and developing a, a transcendental taste for the chanting of the holy name, then one may think about going to Vrindavan and residing in Vrindavan. So, 
উন্নত হয় এবং আমার তো নির্দিত হলে তার সে ভাবের স্তরে উপনীত হয় এবং এই ভাবের স্তরে উপনীত হওয়ার পরে তার রুচি জাগ্রত হয় এবং সে বিজ্ঞাপনে গিয়ে বাস করার মনস্থ করে And of course there's procedures when you get to Vrindavan taking shelter of a devotee and uh, doing your bhajan intensely 24 hours a day. So after coming to Vrindavan, Vrindavan's a big place. Where should you go in Vrindavan? So Vrindavan Just like we should reside in a holy place in the nectar, in uh, his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or the nectar of devotion, it describes living in a holy place like Mathura. So Mathura is a big, Mathura district is very big, it encompasses, you know, many places. So where should you live? So in this text number 9, Rupa Goswami is analyzing the different places and telling us which one is superior to which one, what's the, the hierarchy of the spiritual places and bringing us to the topmost place which he describes to be Radha Kund. So he mentions, you know, the spiritual world superior to the material world and superior to the spiritual world is Mathura because in Mathura we say the Janmastan, the birthplace of Lord Krishna is there. So that's a very holy place that the Lord chooses to appear in this world in that place. Mm. The temple of Keshav is there, Keshavaji is there, the Lord Chaitanya had gone there, Lord Krishna, so Lord Krishna appeared in Mathura, it's a holy place and he had other pastimes there in Mathura like he came after he'd gone to Vrindavan he came back to Mathura and he killed Kamsa there and, uh, and there was a wrestling match and so Krishna did so many things. There in Mathura. So Mathura is certainly a holy place, particularly because the Lord took his birth there, and we go there to see that temple where the Lord, the place where the Lord appeared. But even more holy than the, his birthplace, Rupa Goswami said even better than the birthplace, Mathura, is the twelve forests of Vrindavan. Because it's in the forests of Vrindavan, Krishna performed Rasa Leela. <laughs> Krishna of course performed many pastimes in the forest, there were different demons coming there, Krishna would kill the different demons like Agasura and Bakasura and so on. And Krishna would enjoy pastimes with his cowherd boyfriends herding the calves and cows there in the, in the forest of Vrindavan but he also had his pastimes with the gopis and he'd come in the night and dance Rasa Leela with the gopis. So when Krishna was in Mathura his pastime there was with his parents so it was Vatsavya Ras so higher than Vatsavya Ras is this Madhurya Ras where Krishna is with the gopis at Rasa Leela. Madhurya Ras Krishna Vatsavya Ras Ashwatan Kura Chilam Kintai Vatsavya Ras Ashwatan Kura Chilam Kintai Vatsavya Ras Ashwatan Kura Chilam 
মাধুর্য রস বেশি শ্রেষ্ঠ এবং তিনি বৃন্দাবনে গোপীদের সঙ্গে রাসলীলায় মাধুর্য রস আস্বাদন করেছিলেন But when Krishna dances Rasa Leela, there's many different kinds of gopis there. Some of the gopis, not all the gopis are Nityasiddha, not all the gopis have come from the spiritual world. Some are coming up, they've just become pure and they're just getting ready to go to the spiritual world. And some of the gopis are from the forest. When Lord Ramachandra was there in the forest, he met the great sages and they desired to have a conjugal relationship with him. They were attracted to Lord Ramachandra. So Lord Ramachandra told them to come in his next incarnation. So these great sages, uh, they all took birth in the family of the gopis in Vrindavan, the coward women in Vrindavan, and they became gopis and they're, they're also there, Rasa Leela. And then the personified Vedas, they also desire to understand the, the glories of the Lord's pastimes like Rasa Leela. So they were given the benediction that they could also come as gopis and take part in the pastime. Of course, only gopis can take part in Rasa Leela. Lakshmi was not able to take part in Rasa Leela because she couldn't take up the mood of the gopi. It said Mother Lakshmi went, she's there, she went to Braja and she great tapasya. And she was begging the people of Vrindavan, please, please, I want to take part in Rasa Leela. But Mother Lakshmi could not give up her queenly attributes, her nature as a goddess of fortune. She couldn't just become a cowherd woman and pick up cow dung and take care of cows and cook milk all day. That's not the nature of the goddess of fortune. So it was so much against her nature that even though she did great austerity, she was not able to actually become a gopi. <laughs> Lord Shiva also took part in Rasa Leela. He, he transformed him. He took bath in one of the kunds there and took a body of a gopi and he also danced in the Rasa Leela. But then Krishna told him, this is not really for you, you know, you're not a, a gopi, you know, your, your duties are other where. So Lord Shiva is, uh, he was given another service. What's, it, what's his name? Uh, became uh, Gopeshwar, Gopeshwar, Gopeshwar Mahadev, right. Gopeshwar, the, the Lord of the gopis, yeah, so. So we see many different gopis all taking part in Rasa Leela and so it wasn't quite so pleasing and satisfying to Srimati Radharani. So, even more 
exalted than the twelve forests of Vrindavan where the Rasa Lila is performed is the Govardhan Hill because Krishna picked up the Govardhan Hill and held it up for seven days just to protect the inhabitants from the wrath of Indra, the inhabitants of Braja and all the cows and everything. They all came under Govardhan Hill and they were protected from the wrath of Indra by the grace of Govardhan. Oh, oh God. There were many different pastimes performed on Govardhan Hill. I was telling how Krishna sometimes would make the gopis pay tax. And there were caves there also where the cowherd boys were Krishna and played and the gopis sometimes they'd, they'd all play. They would enjoy many pastimes on the bank on the hill of Govardhan. They would collect the fruit and flowers which would grow there from the trees and they'd bring the cows to eat the grass which grew there and very nice water was flowing from the waterfalls from the Govardhan hill. Water for drinking and water for bathing. When the gopis they glorify the Govardhan hill, uh, there's that famous verse in the tenth canto which describes uh, a, 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 a Jahamad Adri Abala has Harida Savarya Yat Rama Krishna Charana Sparasha Pramodha. Like this, uh, the gopis are glorifying Govardhan Hill that he's the best of all the devotees of Lord Hari because he does so much service for Lord Krishna and for all the devotees. <laughs> And his service, his greatest service was that he defeated the wrath of Indra by allowing Lord Krishna to hold him up for seven days. Pilastya, Pilastya was a great yogi with mystic powers. He could fly and he was carrying Govardhan but he couldn't even pick up Govardhan. Govardhan became so heavy when he got to Vrindavan that he couldn't even, Pilastya couldn't pick him up but Lord Krishna picked him up and held him for seven days and nights. And how does this relate to Krishna's dealings with his devotees? This is actually very nice arrangement for Krishna because it means the gopis and Krishna, they can be looking at each other continually for seven days and nights. So Srimati Radharani and the gopis, usually they cannot look at Krishna because he's a boy and they're young girls, and they're not married yet. So young married, unmarried girl, she cannot talk to a boy. It's very bad. The, culture is like that, very strict young girls, they cannot mix freely with the boys. So the gopis were always feeling, oh, and Krishna would go away all day in the forest and they wouldn't even see him. But when, he, when Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill, then he called, every, oh, called everybody come. So the gopis could all be there and they could be what, there right next to Krishna, looking at Krishna. And Krishna could also be looking at them 
and this way they could be very happy, satisfied. Nobody would complain because it's a special situation. Krishna has to hold, he's holding up the Govardhan hill. The gopis have to be protected. So there was no fault on their part. They could be there with Krishna and they could enjoy his company continually for seven days and nights. So, uh, Gopi Gone Rane ki itse chilo Krishna ke beshi kore dekha kintu tara Krishna ke beshi dekhte parte na karon tokhon sanskriti ato kothor chilo je alpo vasko chile mera ekta pore dikhe takate parbe na darshan korte parbe na to Gopi Gone hoyto khub alpo shomoy jonno Krishna ke the darshan korte parten to ebong Krishna tader ke darshan korte parten na kintu eta tokhon Govardhan Parbat ke Krishna tar baam haste rangle pore tolon korlen tokhon so Govardhan becomes Krishna's transcendental umbrella and protects not only Krishna and all the cows and all the bridge bases, they're all protected by Govardhan and Govardhan defeats the wrath of Indra. So Govardhan Hill is very great, but even of all the among the twelve forests of Vrindavan, Govardhan is very special there. But then at the end of Govardhan is Radhakund. And Rupa Goswami says this Radhakund is the best of all places. But Prabhupada writes here in the purport, the importance of Radhakund cannot be realized by other Vaishnav Sampradayas. Yeah, there are four Vaishnava Sampradayas, but it's only the followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who give great importance to this place, Radha Kund. Some, some people may come there, some Vaishnavas may come there, they are coming there because of Krishna not because of Srimati Radharani. They are coming there and say, oh, this is Shamakund. They give more importance to, to Krishna rather than Srimati Radharani. Before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, you, people just worshipped Krishna. They didn't, you didn't see Radha Krishna temples. It was only Krishna who was being worshipped. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who explained them the position of Srimati Radharani and how she's the Ladini Shakti of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord and he should never be alone. He should be with his consort. <laughs> Among the four Sampradayas, the Nimbarka Sampradaya, they worship Radha and Krishna. The other sampradayas, Vishnu, Swami, they worship Krishna, but they don't worship Radharani. Or the, the, the Sri Vaishnavas from Ramanuja, they worship more, uh, they will worship Sitaram, Lakshman Hanuman, they will worship Lord Nisringadev, they won't worship Krishna. Mm. They will, they will sometimes, but not much. But if they worship Krishna, maybe they'll worship Krishna with his wife Rukmini, Rukmini Krishna. 
সেই সম্প্রদায় তারা রাধারানীর রাধাকৃষ্ণের পুজো অত বেশি করে না তারা হয়তো রাম সীতা লক্ষ্মণ হনুমান অথবা রাধা কৃষ্ণ রুক্মিণী রুক্মিণী কৃষ্ণ বিগ্রহ দ্বারা পূজা করেন they are connected with lord chaitanya mahaprabhu they don't understand the actual position of radha kund mm. and to actually understand fully the this the significance of radha kund you have to actually hear from devotees like rupa goswami who is the direct disciple of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu Rupa Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami, they both uh, give a lot of importance to Radha Kund and they often resided there, especially Raghunath Das Goswami, he resided there on the banks of Radha Kund. So Prabhupada said that Radha Kund is mainly worshipped by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas who follow Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We give importance to Radha Kund not simply because of Krishna but because of Srimati Radharani because she's the, 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 the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna and she's the person who gives all pleasure to Lord Krishna. We want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani by pleasing Srimati Radharani, if Radharani is pleased with us, then she can introduce us to Krishna. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, they also have their house there in Radha Kund. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada had actually come there to Radha Kund to give lecture. The Babaji's had all come. But when he began to speak on the Upanishads and speaking philosophy from the Upanishads, then the Babaji's they all went away. They were not inclined to hear. They simply wanted to hear Leela. Uh, so they don't understand the importance of philosophy but Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati before presenting Leela first you want to have a good some knowledge of Sambandha and make sure the proper philo philosophical understanding is there, otherwise all the Leelas will be misunderstood. So although here in this verse residence at Radha Kund is glorified and they said, oh you're very unfortunate if you don't go and stay there. But we saw when in Prabhupada's time when one of the devotees from ISKCON went there to stay at Radha Kund, Prabhupada had another devotee go there to bring him back. <laughs> Prabhupada didn't want our devotees just to go there independently because it's very dangerous that you get the wrong association. Sometimes people think, oh what's the harm? They're also Krishna devotees. They're also chanting Hare Krishna. 
they are also in the holy place. What's the difference? There is a big difference. You have to be very careful. You go to these places, you have to be very, very careful. There are many different deviations and different sects, different other groups. They will teach something very different. And if you learn something different, then it's very hard to correct it and to come back into the proper understanding. So there are many people residing there at Radhakund in the dress of Babaji. We say Babaji because they're following the dress, the renunciation of people like Raghunath Das Goswami who was in the, he, was a, he took renunciation, he lived there at Radhakund. So they wear the, the, the white color cloth, they don't wear saffron dress. Saffron dress is the color of the material world. But the white color, that's the color of some Paramahansa, one who is beyond the material world. So they may wear the white dress of the Babaji, the renounced order, and they may be living there in Radhakund. But we have to see what is their behavior, what is their sadhana, what is their spiritual practice. Because it's clearly stated that if you have even a tinge of material desires and you go there and try to do that bhajan, you will not be successful. Or rather you'll simply commit offence. So this nectar, this Uparishamrita has to be understood in a very systematic manner. You have to learn from the beginning how to apply this philosophy. Just like sometimes, you know, when we meet people doing yoga, they say, oh yeah, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing asanas, and you ask them, are you vegetarian? Are you doing the yam niyam? Are you? And it's, no, 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 I'm not doing that. I just do the yoga asanas. And so then you haven't done the first step or second, how you can do the third step? <laughs> So here also in Upadeshamrita, Srila Rupa Goswami began teaching a Vacho Vegam Manasa Kroda Vegam, control the different Vegas, the urge to speak, the mind's demands, the actions of anger, the urge of the tongue, the belly, the genital. If we have not conquered these urges, we have no business in Radhakun. So, we may go, however, and visit and we can take some water on our head. If you feel you're really qualified, you can go take your bath in the Radhakund if you feel you're very qualified. But be very cautious, be very well behaved, don't do any of it. And there are other ways to also serve Radhakund. Just like sometimes 
uh, Govinda Maharaj, His Holiness, Bhakti Bringa Govinda Maharaj, he brought devotees there and they cleaned everything. They got brooms and brushes and buckets of water and they went around and they cleaned everything around the Radha Kund. They swept it all, made it very clean. It's a very nice seva to do. And you can also serve Radha Kund by offering obeisances, doing dandabats around the Radha Kund. That's also very nice. Just like people also do dandabats around Govardhan Hill. Some Govinda Maharaj also did that with Sachinandan Swami and some other devotee. I think also uh, that Kirtanir devotee, what's his name? Uh, I forget. No, from Mauritius, the boy from Mauritius. Not proper disciple. Huh? No. Anyway, but there were several of them, they went and they did Dandabhat Parikrama around Govardhan Hill. It takes a month, take a while, you know, four hours a day, something like that. You can do it. That's a very nice seva. Go around the Govardhan Hill, offer obeisances every day. Or you can go, just go around Radha Kund and Shama Kund, offer obeisances. Or you can get a broom, even better, you get the broom and you sweep and clean the place. So that humble service is very much recognized by Srimati Radharani and appreciated by Lord Krishna. We offered some humble service like that. Just like Shamananda Prabhu, he used to clean the Rasastala where Krishna dances Rasa Leela. He was cleaning the Rasastala every day and one day he found one of the breast, one of the ankle bells from Srimati Radharani's uh, uh, anklets. And when he found this, actually he found that later on Gopi came to get it from him and, and he was blessed. They gave him a new name, they changed, because his name was Duki Krishna Das, they changed his name to Shamananda and they gave him a special tea like they put that ankle bell, they put it on his forehead, made a special tea like and down to today, the followers of Shamananda in that line of disciplic succession, they all put that same tea like which was given to him by Srimati Radharani. <laughs> So Srila Prabhupada's personal desire was not very much, he was not very much eager for our devotees to spend much, too much time at Radha Kund because of the influence of all the Babaji's there that their association would certainly that we would learn something different than what Prabhupada is teaching us because he knew that the, the mood of the Babaji's there is very different from what Prabhupada is teaching us which Prabhupada is teaching us the, the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, so 
So uh, you have to be very cautious in these kind of holy places because there's always a danger to meet the wrong people. And so it's very important you go to a place like Radhakund, you want to go with the devotees, you don't want to go alone. So, so many people are there and they are all going to Radhakun and they, yeah, I'm also a devotee, I'm a devotee. I was talking one day, I was going around Govardhan Hill and I met one man and I, and, and I was talking to him and he told me, he said, yeah, I come to Govardhan every, every Purnima, every full moon I come and do Parikrama. He was telling me, I said, oh, really, every, every Purnima, you must be a very great devotee. You must be a really good devotee. He said, yes. <laughs> he said, not only Krishna, I worship all the gods. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he, he didn't understand Krishna as the Supreme God and all the other gods are his servant. He thought it's all one, uh, you know, he was my body and personal, but somehow he had some attraction for Govardhan Hill. So Prabhupada is warning us how this Radha Kund is very special for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Other people they come there but they don't they don't really understand for the, the real significance because they're not so much uh, in the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're not following the Goswamis, they're not following Rupa and Raghunath. Okay, have we got any questions today? <laughs> yes, well, both are true. Uh, we have to, but the question is, uh, it appears like some contradictory statement is there. Devotee is quoting that uh, if we offend the holy name, then you, there's nothing you can do to overcome it if you commit an offense against the holy name. But uh, what is it? Uh, if we offended, if we offended devotee, if you offended devotee, you can overcome that by chanting the holy name. So the holy, huh? Oh, if we offend the Lord Himself, we can overcome that by chanting the holy name. But if we commit some offense against Lord Krishna, the the Lord, we can overcome that by chanting the holy name. But on the other hand. In the, holy, in the age of Kali, the holy name is the most important? Most merciful. merciful. Most merciful because? Because if we do all kinds of offenses, we can chant holy name, right? We can nullify all our, of our, our offenses by chanting the holy name. And so, is this a contradiction? Yeah. 
we have to understand if we offend the holy name, if we offend Krishna, if we offend Krishna, we can overcome that offense by chanting the holy name. Right? Because the holy name is merciful. Yes, just like people are doing deity worship. Someone may be doing deity worship and committing some offenses. So they can nullify these offenses by their service to the holy name, by the chanting of the holy name. So it's very important that people who are doing deity worship that they're also very strictly chanting the holy name because that will protect them from any offenses they may have committed in chanting the holy name. But if we offend the holy name, what's the second part? Well, there's no contradiction. I don't see any contradiction. The holy name, all kinds of offenses can be removed by chanting the holy name. And the first part is that if we, if we offend Krishna, we can chant the holy name to remove the offense. But the process for chanting, the process for deliverance in this age is the chanting of the holy name. You can't think, I will worship Shaligram Shila. I've, I've made an offense in the holy name, so I will worship Shaligram Shila. This is not very good thinking. This is, we, we want to chant the holy name. If we want to chant the holy name properly, that way then we become qualified to worship Shaligram Shila. If you can't chant the holy name properly, how will you ever worship Shaligram Shila? Shaligram Shila is meant to be worshipped by those who are in pure goodness, brahmanas. So, the holy name can deliver us from offences, but it cannot deliver us from an offence against a pure devotee. If we offend, if we commit Vaishnava Aparad, the chanting of the holy name cannot nullify that offence. We have to get forgiveness from the devotee himself. But chanting the Lord's holy name can certainly nullify offenses. For example, offenses in service, offenses to the holy dham, offenses to for example, in seva, seva uh, to the deities, we commit some offense, we've done something like that. And so, we, we can nullify these offenses through the chanting of the holy name. But if we offend the devotee, we have to go to the devotee and get forgiveness. <laughs> And we have to chant the holy name without offense to get relief from these offenses. And if our chanting is offensive, then it won't nullify other offenses. We have to learn to chant the holy name with purity, with a sincere heart. 
and avoid offences, then it can nullify offences. So the pure holy name has to be there. At least Namabas, at least it must be on the level of Namabas, the intermediate name, the shadow of the name. If it's Namaparad, it's not going to nullify offences. It's going to create more offences. If we offend the holy name, there's no remedy. The holy name can destroy all our other offenses, but if we offend the holy name, then there's no remedy for overcoming the offenses to the holy name. No, we can over there is a remedy for offenses to the holy name. The remedy is to chant the holy name itself, purely. Offensive chanting is better than not chanting. Offensive chanting will attract the, the mercy of a devotee and a devotee will come and instruct the offensive chanter how to improve the quality of his chanting so that his chanting can come to a higher level, at least to the level of Nama Bas. And in that way, then he will be able to get relief from his offenses. So, the the, the one can be relieved from the offences in the holy name. It comes by chanting the holy name without offence, or at least the nama bas. Nama bas means trying to avoid offences and feeling very sorry in the heart that he's chanted with offence and wanting to, desiring to chant the name purely. Vishnu, well, generally Vish, are Vishnu and Krishna the same? Why, are they the same or are they different? No, so Krishna means, it refers to the two-armed form of Krishna playing the flute in threefold bending form with peacock feather. Generally we think of Krishna in Vrindavan, but we also see Krishna in Mathura and Krishna in Dwarka. So Krishna is generally two-armed form Krishna, but, but Vishnu is the expansion of Krishna. And so uh, there are Vishnu expansions like the Purusha avatars, there's Garbo Dakashayi Vishnu, Shiro Dakashayi Vishnu, Karana Dakashayi Vishnu, the three Purushas who are responsible for the creation of the material world. Like Karana Dakshai Vishnu is residing in the Kosha Ocean and then Garbo Dakashayi Vishnu is in each universe. He exp Vishnu expands into each universe, the bottom of the universe, and then he expands into the heart of all living entities and into every atom as Shirodakashai Vishnu. So this Vishnu, like the Vishnu is also the super soul. But Krishna, he is in Goloka Vrindavan, he's playing this flute. In Goloka Vrindavan, he's a cowherd boy. Vishnu is not a cowherd boy. Vishnu is the consort. Vishnu is with Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. Lakshmi is the concert of Vishnu or Lakshmi Narayan. But Krishna, 
Krishna is different. Krishna is, well, Krishna has his wives in Dwarka, like Satyabhama and Rukmini. And Krishna is also, we know Krishna and Vrindavan, his pleasure energy is Srimati Radharani. Is that true? Is it true that if we always hear the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis, we'll lose our taste for the material world? For loving stories in the material world. We'll lose our attraction for hearing loving affairs of the material world if we hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna with the gopis. Yes, that is true. If you have a genuine desire to give up loving affairs of the material world, then you can find great attraction, great solace, great comfort in hearing the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis. And you never think to try to imitate or to enjoy such a mundane perverted affairs in the material world. Okay, thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So tomorrow we'll do ten. Tomorrow we'll do ten. Text ten. Today my microphone was not working, he said. So oh. I had to speak loudly so that your microphone... Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much...